Hello, I'm Pratyush and today I want to talk to you about Zvigato, directed by Nandita Das, starring Kapil Sharma and Shana Goswami. Zvigato fits snugly into director Nandita Das's filmography on the heels of Firak, set in post Kodra Gujarat, and Manto, the biography of the acerbic, irreverent, iconic journalist and writer. There's a flat righteousness with which Das makes her movies. They're relevant, elegant, and dull. The cinematic inertia coming from the force of intention, not a force of feeling. You endure her films like you endure a street play or a matter-of-fact documentary because they seem important. Many might call these projects brave, and they do seem more like projects than films. That they're important, that they're brave, has no bearing on their cinematic grip. Intentions rarely have that effect. Set in Bhuvaneshwar, Zvigato is a portrait of Manav Singh, played by Kapil Sharma, one of the delivery men of the titular Zvigato, an app that's a concoction of Zomato and Swiggy. It blares out a shrill alarm when an order is placed for the delivery man to accept. If you take a selfie with a customer, it gives the delivery man a tip. I say delivery man because we only see men delivering. Manav used to work at a factory as a supervisor, a more respectable, well-paying job. Post-pandemic, Manav's majbudi, his desperation, thrusts him into the gig economy to take this job, a majduri which involves delivering to the house of the principal of his daughter's English medium school, walking into apartment complexes that have separate lifts for delivery people, into apartments where drunken orders were placed by entitled people. His wife, Pratima, played by Shahana Goswami, tries to take some of this economic burden by beginning a job as a mall's cleaning lady while also giving massages to women on the side. She meets rich people, one nice, one terrible. While she is made to enter a different elevator in an apartment complex, she too, at home, reserves a different cup for the garbage collectors who ask for water. The algebra of niceness, of exclusion, has to be balanced, isn't it? Pratima and Manav, along with his mother and the two kids, cut a figure of a family that is poor but thriving. They don't seem emotionally depleted as they're financially wanting. To watch Zvigato now, when unemployment in India has ripped through the roof, when news of mass layoffs keep burning up the trending cycle, is to watch a contemporary portrait, the rush of relevance keeping the dry treatment of the film afloat. What is a dry treatment? One where the film is gazing at sadness, happiness, with the same distant gaze. There's even a brief awkwardly staged incomplete aside where we move into a political rally for labourers filled with a puffy rhetoric and empty promises which usually provoke something. A temporary sense of hope perhaps, a sense of purpose, an inspired hurrah. Nandita Das isn't interested in any of these possibilities, looking at a protagonist's life unfold like a politically conscious fly on the wall. Kapil Sharma's performance brings pathos to the forefront in a powerful scene played out casually where he confronts his boss, played by Shaini Gupta. He's made to confront both the perks of the job and its violence, the gifts and the gaffes of capitalism. Nandita Das frames his desperation as angsty, not entirely virtuous, not entirely reasonable, but not entirely unreasonable either. A delicate scene, this one. But unlike the gossamer tenderness of moments in Chaturjit Ray's Mahanagar, when a husband grapples with the wife taking up the economic burden of the family, here there's something bland, almost edgeless in the staging of Zvigato, especially Mana's reluctance to Pratima's work. I've been told that in the version that played out at the Toronto International Film Festival, there was a sex scene that seems to have found itself in the editor's dustbin as the film made landfall in India. A forceful directorial hand is apparent right from the first frame, a bizarre dream sequence. Cinematographer Ranjan Palit's shaky camera and Sagar Desai's endlessly, perhaps needlessly strumming score gives the film a shaky sheen. It feels incomplete, like the reach far exceeded the grasp when the film ends a feel-good abruptness lingers. There is a Muslim and a Dalit cameo people whose existence is to show them despairing. The problem of a righteous gaze is that you're unable to see the oppressed as joyous too. You can only project pathos. Das, who has worked on the Marxist playwrights like Safdar Hashmi in Jananati Manch, has been unable to make the politics that she builds her film on palpable, provocative, personal. Her characters float around, sometimes feeling like ideas in search of a personality. What keeps the film from collapsing, however, is Shahana Goswami. Her eyes steely and wide, her accent breezy and unstudied, her gait paced and aware. Her eyes dilating further when she's told that she will have to enter the men's washroom to clean it is both comic and tragic. 
Goswami has that electric presence that pulls at your gaze when she's on screen, your eyes unconsciously dart towards her, even if all she is performing is silence. And in a film that wants to consciously make noise center stage, this gilded, gripping silence makes for a more compelling companion.